We're in Petal today to see uh, one of the bright spots of Mississippi, some of the work that they've done here with their early learning collaboratives, the leadership the state has shown, and how it's transformed early learning here in Petal. We're finding that our children that have been in our public pre-K and in our early learning collaboratives are coming in, outperforming all other children um, across the state, even those that are in private pre-K. So we know what works. There's too much research out there right now about pre-K, and not only its impact on children um, in elementary school, but long-term and in life. Early childhood education has been a, a priority of our district for quite some time. Now, for over 20 years, we've had an emphasis in knowing the importance of working with our youngest students first in order to better prepare them for when they enter kindergarten and then their entire journey throughout their K-12 experience. Petal was the first city in Mississippi to be a uh, Excel by Five city, and a lot of cities now have copied that, and, and I think because they've seen the success we've had at Petal, really they all tie together because we're all trying to make a better community. So a collaborative is a group of people. In this case, you've got the Petal School District, you've got Head Start, and they come together and focus on pre-K instruction. Because normally Head Start does its thing, the school districts do their thing, but they come together. And when we form the collaboratives, the one thing that we try to ensure is that they had three-year-old and four-year-old standards in place. We knew what quality programming need to look like. We provided a tremendous amount of professional development. And so the whole idea was to establish a high quality program for four-year-olds so that they could be better prepared by the time then that they came to kindergarten the following year. We could see that we were having children that weren't coming to us ready and we wanted to partner with the child care centers to let them know what the expectations would be when they got to the primary school. We actually went to the Head Start Center and the private preschools and really just started working with those directors and those teachers trying to find out what was happening. They were in a great place. They were in a center, they were learning, they were being fed, they were being loved on. It was just not the things that I needed them to be prepared for to come into that, that educational setting. They had teachers that would do anything, they just didn't know. And it was so frustrating when we came back because I wanted to be able to provide that to them. That really started that journey for us. So initially, they were a little hesitant and resistant because, you know, they're all competing for dollars. We used tax credit dollars and we uh, purchased a common curriculum that all of our child care centers have and uh, use in their centers. And we use that same curriculum in our early learning collaborative classes as well. When you have somebody that's serving you, when they really realize that, hey, we're here to serve you, um, then, then you can build that trust. The early learning collaboratives really tie together the public schools, child care centers, and Head Start. And we work as a team to look at early childhood and try to assess children, look at their physical needs, their um, cognitive needs, their mental health needs, and make sure that the whole child and the family are progressing through the program. When you have a testing at the beginning of the year, to see where the children are. And then you have it again in the middle of the year to see that they're advancing or not advancing. Then you know what you need to improve in your program. And that has been a big benefit to us. There's only so much dropout prevention you can do when a student enters, enters high school. The true dropout prevention to me starts in early childhood education. And that's why we put our emphasis, our time, our resources, our dollars into our youngest students because we want them better prepared for when they enter our school district. It makes sense to invest dollars in the future generations. We've done that for our kindergarten and up. It makes sense that the quality education for very young children should be at the top of our list. Children are the future. And if we don't give them what they need while they're young enough, they're not going to be as successful as they should be. And if we're not working all together, we're not going to do as well as we need to do. These collaboratives are just doing an unbelievable job. I mean, it's because of the work with the collaboratives that Mississippi has been recognized by the National Institute of Early Education Research two years in a row for meeting all 10 quality indicators. And I can just imagine if you could have that same quality experience around our state. But it's the first time we've really ventured down this public path. And so we've put out documents now to our districts about how they can use their own dollars, uh, either local dollars or title dollars, to establish pre-K. 
Uh, I just think that this is something that, um, that we've got to really double down on uh, in order to really make progress inside our state. What we've seen here is that it starts with state leadership, making this a priority. It's also about setting the conditions to make sure that uh, partnerships like the one here in Petal can actually happen. It's a true community effort to make sure that the, all kids in this community come into kindergarten ready, no matter where they are.